Hi, it's T with Tea Quilts, and I'm back with our third step of this process. We're actually going to cut our plain squares. <music> Process, we're actually going to cut our plain squares and we're going to cut them into eight and a half inch squares so for this section you need to pick a fabric that you want to use which is going to primarily dominate the quilt and so I have chosen this piece here it has um, green with a little yellowish and purplish tint but the purple can sometimes look like it's blue so I'm just picking this. The other thing with this is that I'm using a fabric that I call a cheap boutique. And they tend to be a little bit wider, like 45 to 46 inches wide. So I'm able to get five blocks out of a strip set. If you're using a fabric that's 42 inches wide, you may be only able to get four. So if you can get four eight and a half inch squares from your fabric you're going to need two and one fourth yards of fabric but if you can get five blocks out of a strip then you'll just need two yards of fabric so it's very close in what you need because of how you purchase fabric um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut we actually need 36 eight and a half inch squares so I'm going to cut this and then I will start putting my quilt together so I've already folded my fabric twice so that I can just utilize my space I have here and I'm just going to go down this strip set and cut these pieces into eight and a half inches And I may end up going off camera. So now I am going to stack two of my strip sets and cut them at the same time. You can cut more if you want. I'm just going to cut these four layers. I've got to get the fold out of the back one. <laughs> so we will now want to cross cut these into eight and a half inch squares. We've just cut them into eight and a half inch strips. So here we go. Line back up on the zero. So I'm going to cut twice and then as I said for my fabrics I'm able to open this out and cut 
a extra from each strip because this fabric is a little bit wider uh, for 42 inches again you will only be able to cut four pieces of fabric I mean four squares out of a strip set not four pieces of fabric <laughs> Line this up and cut. And I am cutting at nine and a half. Sometimes I don't cut on my zero, just because if you cut on your zero all the time, you'll wear your mat out a little bit faster. So I like using different places on the mat to cut. So I just cut those into squares. So now I have 10. So I'm going to keep doing that until I have 36 squares and I'll be back. So I'm out on my deck so I can have more room to lay out my pieces and I have a vinyl backed tablecloth that has a little feltish top to it so that it can hold my blocks to keep them from blowing in the wind. I also have tape that I'm going to use to label my rolls and I also have a marking pen.
So I'm actually laying out rows six blocks down. I have six blocks across that way. <laughs> And six blocks down if you're counting my background squares so six down six across So there is my quilt laid out. Now I'm going to start working on my triangles. Remember that I have triangles that look like this from cutting the square and ones that look like this. So I am going to put the two different kinds, like this will be on left and right. This will be on my top and bottom. Now the last thing I need to do now is just add my corners. So now I'm going to actually label each row and then I'm going to actually pick these blocks up and take them inside. And I will start showing you how I'm going to sew it but most of my sewing will be done in the live chat on, let's see what's the date, Saturday, September 26th at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that's where most of my sewing will be, but I will show you how I'm going to sew my, I'll show you like the first two diagonal rows when I get there. Please don't blow.
Hi quilters, I'm back in my house. I have not marked my rows or anything. I don't normally have to do that when I'm sewing, but if I need to, then I will do it in the interim of me piecing those rows together. But this quilt is put together on a diagonal and I wanted to show you how that works. And so I'm just going to lay some pieces out here just so you can see what I'm talking about here. And I'm only gonna lay out the first few blocks so that you can see what I am talking about. Okay? All right, so that is how this particular row will be pieced. And I'm going to just go ahead and slide this up so I can add another row. And it's not all probably going to fit on my long arm table but I want you to get a gist of what I am trying to show you. So then my next block will be my focus fabric that I'm using. Then my pieced block. My focus block. And then my edge. So you can see where I'm making a straight line here across the top and bottom as I'm piecing my rows and I will just continue to do that all the way out. Now, what I want to show you is how I've got these numbered. So I've got this one numbered one, two, and three and so forth all the way through the quilt until I get to the last corner piece which has number 13 on it. And I numbered them just so you would know where they go as far as placement. But how we're going to sew this is that we're actually going to start with row two, which is really row one, but I didn't want to leave this out and not have a number on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn this, flip the triangle over, and we're going to stitch a one quarter inch seam here. That will be sewn together. And then we're going to flip this piece over and sew a quarter of an inch seam that way. You're going to have a little bit of pieces. Your tip might be a little bit hanging off. You can square that up at the end if you need to, uh, but it should fit perfectly. And then once you get this second row pieced, then you can come back and add this corner triangle across the top. So I just wanted to clarify when this corner triangle gets sewed on. Also, when you're doing the rows, it's the same thing. You're just going to sew piece to piece to piece, and then you're going to flip this corner down and sew on that side. And then once you get row two and three sewn, then you can sew this whole row together. And you're basically going to do that all the way throughout your quilt. Now, if you want to see me sew some of this, I am going to be piecing on the live chat on September 26, 2020. So you can just Google T Quilts Live, sew and chat, September 26, 2020. And I have it as 9-26-2020. piece and I just thought that I would come back and add this section on because I wanted to make sure I clearly gave beginner instructions for how to put this quilt top together and also we've got a lot of construction we've got uh, MSD working on our sewer systems in our neighborhoods so that's the noise of the construction crew outside first I just want to show you the entire quilt yet to measure this quilt and I just wanted to come up and show you some details on it um, number one somebody asked me what does it mean when a quilt floats a quilt top is floating from putting these setting triangles on if you don't have exactly one quarter of an inch right here 
when you stitch your quarter of an inch, whatever space you have left is considered making your quilt top float. Um, if you're using uh, rulers and you're rounding up, most likely your quilt top's gonna float just a little. So I am okay with that part. And then on a quilt that is put together on a diagonal, uh, on this particular setting, I'm holding this guys because I'm trying to make sure that I'm up high so you can see. I can, I, for, for my beginners, I just went ahead and made my corner square, my round, my row one. This number two, I left that piece of tape on just to show you what row number two would be. And it's actually just one block and then you're sewing a triangle on each end. And when you sew your triangles on, you wanna make sure that when you sew them on that you're gonna have straight edges along your top and your side, okay? So then once you sew row two together, then you can go ahead and add your corner piece on. And I just fold it in half I used the same lines from my piecing, folded in half, and then I also folded in half on the diagonal of my corner triangle. Okay, next row, number three, I've actually got two of my background squares and one piece block, and then my two triangles on each end. So you just keep doing that, and as you go along, you're adding two more blocks to every row until you get to the center one, which goes diagonally corner to corner on this one. And I'm sorry, it's not like as obvious, but it's corner to corner on this particular one. And I have 11 blocks and two triangles on the end corners. Now on those end corners, you've got to wait to put those together. So once I sewed these blocks together, I went ahead and sewed it to this row and then I left this corner triangle off on the top and the bottom. And then I sewed this row, added it. And then I came back and put the corner triangles on, on the center row. Okay. So a little bit confusing, but I wanted to make sure that I clarified that. Another thing that could be confusing in this quilt layout is if you look at the direction of my string blocks. Now, if you're using crumbs, it really won't matter. But when I sewed my first block here, the block is orientated up and down. When I went to my next row, the, the blocks are orientated where my strings are going east and west. The next row, they're back up and down. And that alternates all the way throughout the actual quilt top. So guys, that's it for this video. We'll come back with our final part, which is adding our borders. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.